Bible study. Zechariah chapter 14. Again, as I've said quite often, we're not in a rush. And this is a very important chapter. And I think we're going to take it subject by subject. Because it answers. Behold the day of the Lord coming. And that's a question. What's the day of the Lord? I read the day of the Lord in the Bible. What is that? And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Spoil is what you get when you conquer by war, by battle, by conflict. For I will gather all nations. So in the day of the Lord, if America is around at this time, and I don't know, Russia, China, United Kingdom, if America is around, God said, I will gather all nations Nothing excluded. Against Jerusalem. Now let me ask you a question. What did God tell Abraham? What did Isaac tell Jacob? And I can't think. What did Balaam tell the king that hired him to come curse Israel? Anybody that curses the people of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they're going to get a curse. And to go against Jerusalem to battle, I don't think that's a blessing. I don't read for I will gather all nations except America. Even if she's around. And the city shall be taken. The house is rifled. The women ravished, raped, abused. Half the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And we read early in the previous chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse 8 and 9, we read where two-thirds of the Jews are going to be killed. And a third are going to be, are going to be the red men. And now we're looking at the capital city of Jerusalem, of Israel. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. It doesn't say excluding America. All nations, all the nations that are in this period of time are going to be gathered against Jerusalem. We read this over and over. We read about the United Nations, which America belongs to. Then shall the Lord Jehovah go forth and fight against those nations. As when he fought in the day of battle. If you are an enemy of Israel, and it said all nations, you are an enemy of God. Revelation 19. Revelation 19.
And I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. There we go. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He's clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies which followed in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. I don't see no red, white, and blue. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. That with the and that with it he shall smite the nation. There's no excluding America. He shall rule them with a rod of iron and treadeth the winepress and the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. He had on his vestry, on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I saw the angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, gather yourselves together unto a supper of the great God. That you may eat the flesh of kings. Those are leaders of nations. The flesh of captains, leaders of armies. And the flesh of mighty men, the army. The flesh of horses. And them that sit on them, the flesh of all men. Both free and bond, both small and great. I saw the beast, the king of the earth. And their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. Against his army. There's God gathering all the nations together. Against the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the, the Word of God, the Word of the Lord. That's Jesus Christ. Remember that. The beast was taken, him and the false prophet that was wrought miracles before him, which had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped the image. And both were cast alive in the lake of fire, which burned with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse. Back to Zechariah. So, verse 1. What is the day of the Lord? That's the second advent. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, God, Jesus Christ. Who the Jehovah Witnesses defile. That our local newspaper did a whole write-up on what Jehovah Witnesses believe. I guarantee you didn't tell them that they don't believe in Jesus as God. And an aspect of, of, of Second John, the Daytona Beach New Daily Newspaper. I am never going to buy your newspaper for the writings. I'm not even going to check it out because I know you. You wrote good about them. But you can go to hell with them. And probably both parties don't even believe there's a hell. I know the Jehovah Witnesses don't. Then verse 3, the Lord has go forth, there's Revelation 19, and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. His feet shall stand in that day. There's the day of the Lord. In that day. Upon the Mount of Olives. Which is before Jerusalem, the city of the Jews, on the east. 
God helps you get a map and, uh, okay, I got a map. All right, Jerusalem East, Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Here is his mount, the Mount of Olives, where Jesus was at. At the second advent, before the millennium, Not the big icebergs are going to flood the entire earth. You know, kind of. You know, what size iceberg you need? They're going to raise the oceans two feet. There's more bull coming out of the of the newspaper and the scientists than there is that ice. But can you imagine what the earth is going to do? How the earth is going to react? When this Mount of Olives where Jesus was splits in half, one going east, the other side going west. There shall be a very great valley. Not a great valley, a very great valley. You and I that are saved, standing behind Jesus on a horse, Joel chapter 2. We're going to see this happen. These are signs for Jews because Jews require it. Joshua didn't do anything like this. Joshua, <coughs> excuse me, Joshua parted the Jordan River. God parted the the, the Jordan River for Joshua to cross. Where have you ever had a mountain quake and split in half? And yet Jesus writes, if you have faith, say to this mountain, depart it. I guess Jesus has got the faith. There shall be a very great valley and half the mountain shall move toward the north, and half of the mountain towards the south. So it rips in half from east to west, and north to south. And the Antichrist, and the false prophet, and those with the mark, don't stop their horses and say, He is the Lord! He is the Lord! Remember he's, uh, uh, Elijah? When he battled the Baalites, the prophets, and a fire came down, the sign of God came down, licked up the water, licked up the trench, and then, he is the Lord, he is the Lord, kill those prophets. The no fear that here are people in the tribulation period coming to the second advent, going soon into the into the millennium. Here is a mountain that is split in half, moves with a with a with a man on a horse, with an entire angels behind him. And at his mouth, like Genesis 1, let there be the sun, let there be clouds, let there be an oak tree, let there be a kangaroo, and boom! His mouth, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. And they're dropping dead. And no one's repenting. Did you notice that? That's remarkable. It's remarkable. We go through a thousand years of the millennium of Jesus Christ. You say, Stanley, is there sin? Is there rebellion in, in, in the millennium? At the end of the millennium, Satan is loose from his chains. Satan comes out and Satan gets an army of men to attack Jesus, to attack the Christians, to attack Israel. And God's like, you're gone. And I have had people in the public ministry I, where I've knocked on doors, I've passed out gospel tracts, I've preached on the streets, I've dealt with them in open Bible, I've taught in the press. I've had people come up to me, well, show me God. I ain't going to do you no good. Because 
Exodus 19 and 20, God spoke from the mountain, right? Did you hear about the griping of the people in the wilderness? There's no food, there's no water, and God take us out here to kill us in the wilderness. And we wait. We are sinners. Accept the grace and mercy of God and the Holy Spirit. You ever thank God just for being saved? You ever thank God that you're not going to be part of this mess? And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For, yeah. For the valley of the mountains shall reach the Zale. Yea, and ye shall flee. Like as he fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, second advent, the Lord my God, Jehovah Witnesses, go back to Revelation 19 and read it. Revelation 19, we'll go there because I know many Christians are lazy and they won't do it. Revelation 19, the Lord my God shall come. Verse 11, I saw heaven open, behold a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true and righteous, he does judge and make war. I thought the Jehovah Witnesses don't, oh, don't make no war, war, I don't really know God, thou shalt not kill. What is Jesus doing? Answer my question. Because Jesus makes war. His eyes are a flame of fire, on his head were many crowns, and name written that no man knew, but he himself. All right? He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, the Word was with God, the Word was God. In the, it, the same as in the beginning of God, all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him is life. And life was the light of men. And you read the rest of the chapter. It's all about Jesus. Zechariah 14. So behold the day of the Lord. That's the second advent. Mark it down, color it down, however you mark your Bible. I don't read the Old Testament. You learn more from the, from the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Gospel. You get the full story. I believe there's a lot of Christians are going to be very scared and shocked when we get to heaven, when we come back on the horseback with Jesus, because they never read their Bible, they don't know what's coming. Verse 4, in that day, it's the day of the Lord. The Lord's return as the Lion of Tribe of Judah. And we're looking at Armageddon. What we're going to do is we're going to stop right there. That's enough information for tonight. We're going to pick up again, Lord willing. I think we're going to do three times in chapter 14. I think it's just slow enough to get it, digest.